On September 30, 1971, the New York Yankees played the Washington Senators at RFK Stadium. It was the darkest day in the history of baseball in Washington, D.C. I think it's one of the saddest moments in Washington history because the people of this community were betrayed. Betrayed by a very cynical owner, uh, betrayed by an organization that was not devoted to winning, um, and betrayed because it was just three years after the awful riots decimated so much of the city. You know, this city, particularly around U Street, this once beautiful black commercial district was a shell of itself, you know, and, and after the team moved away from Griffith Stadium and moved, you know, into what became RFK Stadium after um, Robert Kennedy died but was DC Stadium in the 60s, it had sort of lost its connection to this black commercial district that was gone, right? So the city was in many ways recreating itself and it was in a city in transition. The country was going through an awful lot. You had, you had the war in Vietnam that was, that was, that was still raging. Um, those of us who, who turned 19 that year, like, like I did, had just the month before gone through the, uh, the draft lottery. So, so there was apprehension about, about that. And then the, the economy in, in, in the country in, in general was, was, was sour. Just a month before, uh, President Nixon, you know, historically had, had, uh, had uh, levied wage and price controls in order to, to rein in inflation. So there was a lot of, lot of uneasiness in, in, in the country. And, and baseball was not exactly in the forefront, at least in, in, in most people's minds here in, in, in this city. We did not go to the game because my brothers wanted to go, and my father, who, like his father, was very reticent, didn't show a lot of emotion, wonderful man, just not too demonstrative, he, in this very house, outside, out of sight of all of us, cried, and it was too much for him to go to the game. We didn't know that. He was high, you know, in another room, and my mother never told us that until later in life. I was there, tremendously sad occasion, of course, for everybody. I remember Bucky Harris, who was the boy wonder manager who won the 1924-1925 pennant with the Senators, and who managed the club three different times. And uh, he was sitting in the press box for the last game in 71, and Bucky by that time was in his mid-70s. He wasn't well, I believe he had uh, Parkinson's, and nobody went near him. None of the younger writers went near him. So I went up to him and um, got him to say that it's a very, very sad day for baseball in Washington, uh, which was a quote nobody else had. When the game was just about to start, uh, a group of fans from uh, in the upper level of uh, left field unfurled these two banners uh, that, that, that seemed to look like toilet paper and they spelled out uh, the words short stinks and so the game was delayed at the beginning as the ushers uh, took down uh, took down the, uh, the the banners. Whenever I think of the last game the guy I think of is Ron Mancheen who was doing the games on radio then on the Senators radio network and and Ron Mancheen loved his job and 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 loved doing the games and uh, he was really upset by the move of the team he had no intention of of moving with the team to Texas. And so all night long on the broadcast, he, he ripped the owner. And the owner is listening to, to the game uh, over the telephone. He's, he's not at the game, he's at his home in Minneapolis. So he's listening to a hookup over, the, uh, over his, his, his phone. And then he's calling the general manager of the radio station, get that guy off the air. You know, get him off the air. And the, and the GM of the, of the radio station says, why? You know, <laughs> you're not gonna be on our station next year where he can do whatever he wants to. Bob Short uh, had a special line into his home in Edina, Minnesota, and he was able to listen to the Senator broadcast. Now, he did not show up at the stadium that night for obvious reasons, and I think he might have suffered bodily harm if he had, but he was listening at home, and I was basically saying it's a disgrace that they're uh, allowing Major League Baseball to get out of the nation's capital. There's no excuse for it whatsoever and uh, especially after the uh, outpouring of love for Frank Howard after he hit the home run, 
was, was a tremendous thing. The, the crowd is screaming and Frank is waving to the crowd and he threw his batting helmet into the crowd. So I'm saying these things on the air and Short is calling the uh, broadcast booth and he's saying, make him stop, make him stop. And I said, tell him to go himself. What's he gonna do, fire me? I was talking to Paul Casanova, the senator's catcher. He told me a wonderful story. Ted Williams had not played Casanova much in the latter part of the 71 season because Kathy had been spouting off all year about how much he loved Washington, didn't want the club to move, and Bob Short, the owner, got ticked off and he ordered Williams not to play Casanova even though he was the number one catcher. So the last game, September 30th, 1971, William put Casanova in in the bottom of the eighth inning as a pinch hitter. And um, he draws a walk. And Cassie told me he's going down to first base and all of a sudden it hit him that this was the end of baseball in Washington. And Paul Casanova told me that tears are running down his cheeks and he's walking down to first base and standing on the bag. I'd never heard that story anywhere. It was a, it was a marvelous story. Yeah.